If you've listened to this show for long, you already know that I'm a real big fan of Hemet Meta's friendly atheist blog. For my money, best one-stop shop for atheist news on the internet. And while I don't always agree with every opinion expressed on that blog, you know, friendly and scathing are conflicting goals sometimes, after all, Hemet and his team of contributors do as good a job as anybody keeping the internet informed of the atheist issues of the day. So I want to make it clear before I spend the next five minutes furiously ripping a post on that blog to shreds that I am and will remain a big fan of that site. Now, the post in question was written by Terry Firma, a normally excellent blogger that does a normally commendable job, but utterly failed to do so last week. Uh, but before we talk about his opinion kind of stuff, let me lay out the facts of the case. So the headline he's talking about is about Jaylene Hinkle. Uh, she's a player on the U.S. women's soccer team who withdrew from all the matches the team was playing in the month of June. Um, and officially, she cited personal reasons for her absence. Unofficially, though, her social media activity and previously stated opinions strongly suggested it's because the U.S. team was donning a rainbow-infused jersey for Gay Pride Month, and she was too Christian to have a bunch of gayness all over her tits. Now, since her decision was made public, Hinkle has been roundly and rightly criticized on social media, but Terry Firma's recent post on Friendly Atheist pushed back against the pushback, and I want to push back against that. His article starts off by posing a series of what he seems to think are analogous hypotheticals. Right? Imagine you're on a sports team that wants you to wear a, a, a pro tea party message on your jersey or, or, or a jersey with a, with a Bible passage condemning gays. Wouldn't we support a person who refused to wear those jerseys? So... Yeah, that's how long it takes for this argument to fall apart. I mean, let's acknowledge, as the article does, that nobody's saying she shouldn't be allowed to do that. They're just saying she should be shamed and ridiculed for it. And she should. You know, gay pride isn't a political message unless I don't think gay people should exist as a political position. It's substantively different than being asked to endorse a set of economic policies. But there's a lot more wrong with this post than analogies that aren't analogous. And the problem at the heart of this argument is one that I see often in atheism and skepticism. This idea that standing up for your beliefs can somehow be divorced from the merits of those beliefs. Right. If one religion forbids somebody from eating shellfish and the other forbids them from accepting gay people, those are not equivalent propositions on the acceptability scale. Refusing to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance is not the same as refusing to stand for equality. And again, it's not like anybody is arguing she shouldn't be allowed to have those beliefs. As Terry Firma acknowledges in his article, no sponsors are threatened to boycott the team until she publicly apologizes and wears a really gay shirt. I mean, I, I'd support them if they were, but they're not. What is happening is that some people online noticed a bigot being all bigoty, and they responded with the kind of public shaming that normally goes unchallenged. Oh, okay, <laughs> unchallenged is a bit much. I've been on Twitter, but unchallenged by progressive pro-LGBT rights bloggers like Terry Firma. Anyway, so the article goes on to argue not only that we shouldn't castigate Hinkle, but that we should support her since we all benefit from living in a world where it's okay to express unpopular opinions. As though there were a binary choice between supporting her bigotry and criminalizing it. And, and it's while he's trying to justify that point that Terry dives into territory, I think he owes us an apology for. Quoting from the article, and it's a long quote and there's a lot wrong with it, so just bear with me. Quote, I've heard nothing to suggest that Hinkle is anything less than cordial and professional towards LGBT soccer players and personnel. If she were, in fact, to scold and castigate them, a la the abominable Margaret Court, thereby creating a hostile work environment, that would be a different kettle of fish. Then I could see grounds for disciplinary action and possibly dismissal. But we're not talking about behavior or even an openly hostile, toxic attitude. We're talking about an article of faith. Wrongheaded and prejudicial, though that belief appears to us, there can be no doubt that it's legal and, thank goodness, protected. End quote. Well, shit, I'm sorry. I didn't realize some of her best friends were black. I, I mean, yes, okay, being openly hostile is a worse form of bigotry than being closedly hostile, but that doesn't make the latter acceptable. I mean, I'm not gay, so I can't say for sure, but I feel like somebody publicly saying I shouldn't exist or I shouldn't have pride or that my love doesn't count, that's going to make for a hostile work environment, even if they're crazy nice to my face. And yes, by the way, of fucking course we're talking about behavior. If her prejudice didn't affect her behavior, we wouldn't even be able to talk about it. 
And the fact that her bigotry is motivated by an article of faith is no more exculpatory than the guy who says he only hates Mexicans because of the one that took his job. No excuse for bigotry stands up to the light of reason and shame on anybody who would suggest otherwise. Now, if you're not convinced, right, if you disagree with my take and you want to defend this article, have at it. As me and Terry Firma clearly agree, that is your legal and protected right. But before you do, I want to ask you a quick favor. Just reread the article. But as you do, try to swap out gay for black. Just imagine that on Black History Month, some athlete refused to play rather than don a logo about racial harmony. And let's suppose that upon investigation, their social media post was peppered with messages that decried interracial marriage. Would anyone give a fuck if those social media posts cited a biblical passage? Would anyone hesitate to call for that athlete to be fired? Would any liberal atheist bloggers come rushing to their defense? I feel like no. And, and you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe Terry or, or somebody else listening would say, yeah, you know, that is what had happened. But I'd rather live in a world where that theoretical racist athlete also wouldn't see their job threatened. And we can disagree about that, too. But if we do, let's at least agree that that's what we're disagreeing about. And at a minimum, let's all admit that all bigotry is created equal.